those 50 million people in the United States who are very much subject to these programs and whose lives are very much dependent on them, they need them to survive. And Obama, just like his Republican collaborators, has no interest in supporting them or in creating any kind of solutions. And it's for that reason that Obama is the perfect representative of Wall Street and London and international neoliberal capitalism. Well, Max Geiser, uh, since uh, uh, our guest there talked about uh, how the media and print media is portraying this, it was interesting how this was presented to the media. I mean, the White House gave no particular figures for how much it would bring down the deficit, stating only that somehow uh, uh, with a strengthening economy that it would. Uh, why wouldn't they release figures? And, of course, more importantly, does U.S.'s economic data support a flourishing economy to come? Well, we've already talked about the reason why, because the media in America is corporate owned and it uh, is uh, pretty much taking their direction from the White House. Certainly an outlet like Fox News takes its marching orders directly from the Pentagon and the White House. The Fox News is a state run media outlet in all uh, but name. And uh, this is a funny figure that they came up with that the taxes rates are going to go up for people making over four hundred or four hundred and fifty thousand dollars of course because of the money printing necessary to keep the debts intact going forward a lot of people will start to make uh, three hundred four hundred five hundred thousand dollars a year it's called inflation and uh, but of course a cup of coffee will cost a hundred thousand dollars and uh, a cost of uh, uh, an education will cost uh, several million dollars because that's what happens in a hyperinflationary economy like the u.s is heading into because they're letting the debts uh, expand exponentially and the Federal Reserve Bank they have a remit now as all the G7 nations have signed on to this idea that they can simply print billions and in the in the case of Japan they're going to print one quadrillion in fresh yen according to the new leader in Japan to force inflation into the economy which means that the purchasing power for all these countries and all these populations crashes and we see proof positive in the price of gold and silver which of course are the only real true honest money out there but they are the barometer by which you can judge the, the failure of these policies around the world and as they continue to move up it's a clear indication that the Obama administration's economic policies are a failure as are all the G7 countries. Eric Dreitzer, you, you, you say you want to keep away from uh any type of economic equations perhaps uh, 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 to uh, explain this. So let's focus on uh, what this is going to mean for America. Uh, not in the short term, but uh, well, uh, I would say maybe you can clarify for us or elaborate more on uh, how this is going to erode in some sense the middle class as it's been doing, uh, who's been falling now uh, to the lower class and even below. Uh, with the numbers 50 million to be on food stamp, not to mention uh, the uh, unemployed people who, well, for the ages of uh, 25, 18 to 25, is set to be 20 to 25 percent, if not higher. How do you see uh, then uh, the future for the U.S. where there's going to be a breaking point? Well, I think that uh, the future is certainly bleak. And let's take uh, each one of those different sectors in the economy. For one, we have uh, young people graduating from universities unable to find jobs. And the only thing that they can find is a letter in their mailbox telling them how many tens of thousands of dollars they owe, the massive debt that they really have little chance of ever repaying. So you can imagine what sorts of uh, economic problems that generation faces with nothing but debt to show for their years in universities. Now, if we look at homeowners, for example, we don't really see any solutions coming out of Washington from either the Republicans or Democrats with regard to those people who are upside down on their homes, who are losing their homes to foreclosure. We don't see a moratorium on foreclosures or anything even approaching that. In fact, we see quite the opposite. We see continued giveaways to those banks and financial institutions which are essentially predatorily attacking these homeowners. If we take the elderly, we see 
see people losing their access to senior centers. We see Medicare being gouged. We see an attack on all these various social services and social programs. So it should be self-evident, as I mentioned, how this erodes the social fabric. And then we should remember also that this is something that can take 10, 15, 20 years to rear its ugly head. And what kind of an impact will this have on society uh, in, let's say, 2033, when we have an entirely new generation getting ready to retire, one that has never been able to enjoy the fruits of uh, many of these social programs. And let's also point out that uh, the Republicans are, of course, disingenuous when they claim that they have any interest in the middle class. Their interest is in eroding the social safety net that has been in place now for 70 plus years. And there are many people on Wall Street in Washington and around the world who applaud this mentality. And this is, of course, deplorable. There are many countries, as Max Kaiser pointed out, there are many countries that are following this exact same model and they're not simply the G7 and they're not simply in Europe. We can see a very similar economic model being laid out in South Africa. We can see it all in many other parts of the world. So the, the attack on the social safety net will result in the destruction of the social fabric and that will have far reaching implications well beyond the balance sheets and those on Wall Street. And the, one of the most alarming stats, Max Kaiser, when we look at uh, all the different ones, is uh, uh, that, uh, well, before the fiscal cliff, it was said that every U.S. household owes, uh, what, about $140,000 to the national debt, and that's rising. Explain that for us and how uh, this is going to, uh, some say, by some accounts, that it's going to be passed on to the next generation, these debts that each household owes. Well, the way that America and these other countries can ring up debts that are hundreds of percentage points greater than their gross domestic product is by keeping interest rates near zero percent. The central banks like the Federal Reserve or the ECB or the Bank of Japan or Bank of England have all coordinated their activities. They collude, which is anti-competitive, to keep interest rates near zero percent. And at the same time, they have off-balance sheet accounts, what they call the shadow banking system which is now around the world, if you count it all up, worth $69 trillion. So it's, it, the value is greater than the entire world's GDP. And this debt is orbiting, if you will, the planet uh, and waiting to fall in a most uh, spectacular wave of hyperinflation the second that interest rates start to go up. And what will start the interest rates going up is when one country, it could be China, it could be Japan, says they're not going to play this game of financial chicken anymore and they're going to default on their bonds. That means interest rates go higher, which will set off a chain reaction of global fiat currency collapse. And this is what uh, people in America know very, very well. That's why the very rich in America are buying assets like fine art, like gold and silver, like diamonds, precious metals, because they know that ultimately the Hyperinflation is coming, the currency collapse is coming because of the catastrophe that they engineered, and they will be ruling the world, so to speak. And we'll, we'll go, we're going to go back to a, really a, an economic system that you'd, you'd have to go back to feudalism to find something similar, be, the, the incredible disparity between the top and everybody else in the economy. It's neo-feudalism, and it's, it's being engineered by people around the world. And we see the results today. Poverty is skyrocketing. Food stamp use is skyrocketing. But take a company like J.P. Morgan, for example. Not only are they in, involved in shadow banking with the Federal Reserve Bank in Washington and in Wall Street, but they're also the biggest purveyor of food stamps in America. So people in America who are having their purchasing power completely decimated by J.P. Morgan's um, loans and shadow banking and money printing have to go to J.P. Morgan to get their food stamps processed. So this is really, a, a Jamie Dimon at J.P. Morgan is really, a, he's a, a brilliant financial architect of evil, where people end up always paying Jamie at the end of the day. Jamie always gets paid. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much. Let me thank our guest, uh, Eric Greitzer, is founder of StopImperialism.com. Also, uh, Roland Amora, econo economist and political commentator. And you were just uh, listening to Max Kaiser there. He's a journalist and broadcaster from London. Thank you so much for watching another edition of the Press TV News Analysis. Do send us any comments or questions. News from our Press TV.ir is our email address. From Mikhail Vitafoy and the entire team, it's goodbye.